which really brings us to the point which all that work basically saved us like 27 bucks. Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? I'm really excited today because we are ready to take our vegetable garden beds, you know, these ones, and take them to the next phase, the next step, because it's time to fill them. And I need to do it soon because my little baby veggies, oh, where are they? They're right there. They're doing really, really good. About, I don't know, 75%, 80% of all the plants that I planted are growing, which means I need to have soil in these beds so that, you know, they have a place to live. And one of the things that's like really ready to start heading on out here and get hardened off for much more light than they're getting today is tomatoes. And while those aren't gonna go in these beds, between that trellis up there and that trellis is up front, I need to start like, but I'm thinking we can do some two for one clean up the garden and use it to fill the base of the beds instead of spending so much money. Cause you know, money doesn't grow on trees, which got me thinking there's another project I need to get done and I need to fill these beds. And since money doesn't grow on trees, I could still save money by taking out a tree. And you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about this tree, this giant, gorgeous, flamboyant Ponciana. But the problem is, is everything over here is shaded which is kind of what I was hoping it would do when I originally planted it, but I didn't know it was gonna give us this much shade. I mean, my vegetable garden up front basically is a shade garden. And even my wildflower beds up here, which are supposed to be blooming with tons and tons of wildflowers, don't have very much, mostly because of that tree. Okay, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take out this tree, use it to fill the beds in the back, and just continue to do as much cleanup as we have energy for. But really, this is gonna go, get the beds going, start to fill, start to plant. This is exciting. Let's do it. I gotta get a ladder. <laughs> you gotta activate ponytail. So per usual, when I'm doing projects in front, I got stalled because my neighbors and friends, Ray and Rosie came over and uh, we were discussing their papaya. So they've got all the tips and things they need so that they can take it when they're ready <laughs> to put it in. Uh, and they were with you, some of you guys, right? They were like, no, don't take out the giant tree. But then I explained everything in the, about how it's going to open up the space, how we'll get more flowers. And then they were like, okay, because <laughs> they're one of our retired couples that 
actually goes and like does daily walks and walks to the store and stuff like that. So, you know, they get, they enjoy seeing the changes in people's garden. I haven't put on any suntan lotion. I wondered. Yeah. I was just like, I need to get out there and get this going. Might be regretting that later. I will be regretting that later. So we got most of the tree down. We didn't get the whole tree down uh, because as we tried to work on the trunk, I broke the blade on the reciprocating saw. I started to try to saw it. You might've heard me say to Ben, I think we need a chainsaw. And luckily, as it would have, our neighbor was having a tree taken down that was old and diseased and they were in line of sight of us taking it down. So as we were struggling with the trunk, they offered to just do it and it was so nice. So. We're gonna get lunch and they're gonna come over in a little bit and they're gonna just cut down the trunk part and they're gonna actually for like a hundred bucks haul away all the tree stump stuff that we don't need. <sighs> but we are getting, so what Ben and I had worked on was, you know, of course getting all the major branches down, breaking down the branches. There's still some big ones in the garden, but we've been moving a lot of the bits and pieces out into the beds. The beds are starting to get quite full. It's very exciting. But it's lunchtime. I'm hungry. You're hungry. Maybe you're not hungry. I don't know. I'm hungry. Ben's hungry. You might be hungry. So we're about to take a little break to go get some food. And then we're going to come back to cutting up pieces of tree to put at the base. So that hopefully tomorrow we can go pick up soil and start filling these things. If I could get one, you know, like one totally full, ready to be planted this weekend, I think I'd feel pretty good about it. And it's just, well, I mean, <laughs> it's like a catch-22. It was amazing. The sky is so blue today. It's so sunny out. So once we like took off the top of that tree, it was just so blue. It was like amazing. But then it was also like really bright and hot up there. <laughs> and it normally isn't because it's so shaded from that one tree. So the good thing is we've got more sunlight. So that's going to make that garden so much better in the long run. The bad thing is there was so much sunlight and it's still really hot out. So it's kind of slowing us down quite a bit. So it's a good time for us to go grab some food. Because those baby plants are ready to go. And like, cause, oh man, I got so much to do because I know I need to go pull basically pretty much all those Puerto Rican black beans, even though they're still going strong, harvest off of them. Cause, but I need the trellises because those tomatoes are getting really close to being ready. So it's just got a lot to do, let alone clean up all the rest of this mess. I mean, we got... We got stuff on stuff on stuff on stuff to do. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Oh, it was also really cool. I wish I could have gotten footage of it. We had so many butterflies up front. Every time I went to go get my camera, they flew away. But it just seemed like huge giant swallowtail, huge one. It's really cool. Okay, so tired now. Off to get lunch. Yay. So this is just one of those giant projects that I can tell is going to go across days and days, but we're going to do, we've got the tree out yesterday and today what we need to do is we need to start filling the beds. I don't know if in this video we're going to finish filling the beds, but we're going to just do the best that we can. So what we're going to try to do, because I have literally one hour, <laughs> it's going to move what's left of the tree into the beds in the back. And then I've got eight 
bags of soil. I think there's, there's some amount, there's eight giant bags. So we're gonna try to get that stuff in the last bed and get those in. And I know that's not gonna be enough soil for those five beds, but we're just gonna do the best we can because we've got one hour and then I gotta go. And this is sometimes how we do projects. We just do bit by bit. And I gotta fix, and then I, look. That's what we garden, because we enjoy it. We enjoy it. But man, it is amazing, that tree. Now that it's gone, so much sky. There's so much sky to be seen now. <laughs> Look at all this. Look, there's so much more sky. Okay, not there. <laughs> but look at all that sky. Ah, time is counting down, but we have eight bags. I think it's two cubic feet per bag. I think that's gonna be enough to fill one of these. I'm getting sweaty. I cannot sweat. I do not have time to take another shower. Ah, grab this where you do just whatever you can when you have just like a little bit of time. So we're gonna try to get those bags, fill this bed, and then we're gonna leave it because then I'll go to the store later, pick up more bags, try to finish this off. We're not planting today. We need everything to kind of settle because it's very, uh... but you can see the top of that tree has done an amazing job of filling a ton of these beds. So we'll need a lot less soil, but we don't want to go too crazy and too far because uh, I want to brush my face. So I've got like leaves all over my hand. <laughs> um, but you can see by filling the beds half full, three quarters full, you know, we can avoid using as much soil. Now, as it dries out, it will drop. So, and as it starts to break down, it will drop. So what we do know is that over time, we will need to continue to top this off, but the majority of the volume can be filled by this plant material. So if you are doing raised beds and you're new to it, you know, this is a way that you can minimize, but you can't put, too, you can't, you shouldn't put too much plant material in there because if you put new plants in it and you're planning on using it right away, like in the next month, it's not broken down enough for the plants, like especially vegetables, to access what they need. I did do a video where I kind of go through why and what and how deep, um, but the general rule of some is six inches to a foot needs to be soil initially for from everything for lettuce, tomatoes, to access the nutrition that they need in these beds. So, sun's starting to come back out. Boo, it did drizzle a little bit. Ah, I'm just gonna do the best we can. So, cart's empty, driveway's cleared off. It's not cleaned up, but good enough for right now. We're gonna grab the soil, fill that bed as quickly as we can. Holy moly, guacamole, these are heavy. Ah. bags at a time. Oh, this is gonna be really bad. Okay. But I might not be able to do all this in my one little short time because I'm gonna start sweating way too much and there'll be no recovery. Okay. So should I dump? What do you think? No, we should go do the thing we have to do first 
not sweat to death and we'll come back and we'll do this. It'll be hotter, but that's okay. We're okay with that. We're all agreeing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your support in this matter. <laughs> okay. So I got done the thing that I had to get done that I only had an hour. And after I got done with that, I've run to Home Depot, got more bags of soil because obviously the eight, two cubic foot, whatever ones I have are not going to be enough to fill up those five beds. So my thought was get as much as I thought I could fit in my trunk. Plus I need some for that uh, college project I told you guys about last week, which is, yeah. So here's my thought. I take that other type, which are super heavy to move. I don't put two per four bed. And then I'm going to take two of these green ones, which are a little bit smaller. So instead of two cubic feet, they're 1.5, which is a little bit easier for me to move. I'm strong, but like, they're just kind of big and unwieldy. They're like kind of like a giant wiggly baby child. <laughs> so I went with a little bit smaller, even though it's not the most cost effective. So yes. So what we're gonna do is we'll put two, two, two in and then we'll put two, two, two in and then we'll see how much more we think we need. And we'll come by back, <laughs> we'll go back and buy more. And then I have my giant yellow bag of potting soil so I can fill up tons of little pots uh, to put sword ferns in later, but not right now. Cause we're gonna finish up the vegetable garden bed at least from filling it maybe today, hopefully today. Please say I'm gonna be done with this today. Oh my word. <laughs> okay, see you soon. Okay, we're back. And I'm wearing actually clothes to get sweaty in. So it's okay today if I get really, really sweaty. So what I've done is I've gone to Home Depot twice, Ben's gone once, and we have 48 cubic yards of soil to put in the beds. It's not enough by, cause each of those L shapes is like 38 cubic yards a piece. But in theory, in theory, right? We have filled at least a third of each of those beds with organic material from the tree and cleaning up the yard. But all I'm gonna give you guys is at least one bed. <laughs> because I'm gonna have to make so many trips throughout this week to fill this and at some point I gotta edit right but we're gonna see how much 48 cubic yards is gonna get us because also this is dry cubic yards and what I know historically is when I've done like bags of 0.75 cubic yards it layered about six inches deep but then once it kind of fluffed up it became about a foot deep so yeah so we'll see we'll see how far we're gonna get so let's go. It's slightly cooler, which brings the point. I mean, I'm going to be doing this while it's slightly cooler. What are you going to be doing now that it's slightly cooler? Because we have, for at least St. Pete, highs in the upper 80s, but it's going to get to mid 80s. And then we're going to get to the mid 70s for our lows. And then we're going to get to the low 70s and we're getting into my ideal weather. So I am excited. So whether you get to see me fill all these beds or not, it's happening this week. <laughs> So I got to cut it off at a certain point so I can edit everything. <laughs> but I want to know what you're getting done. What are you finally motivated to go do now that the, like, it's just, it's starting to break. Yes. It's not miserably hot out. It's still hot, but it's not miserable. So.
Well, there you have it. We have filled one, just one bed. We've used 20 bags, which would equal about, let's figure this out, hold on. So we have used 20 bags of the 28 that I have, which ends up being, I just did some quick math, it was 32 cubic yards, cubic feet, I'm sorry, 32 cubic feet, which this bed only holds 38, maybe 39 cubic feet, which means all of that work, all of that tree trimming and weed pulling and like, <laughs> Taking down a whole tree didn't barely scratch the surface. So that, that begs the question, like, what the heck happened? Where was all that stuff? You saw that bed. That bed was, this one was the most full out of all the beds with just plant material. So it begs the question is, how is that only like six cubic feet? All of that. It really comes back to like a lot of that material was green material, which is just a lot of moisture. So as it dried out, a lot of it just evaporated away which really brings us to the point which all that work basically saved us like 27 bucks <laughs> and if we move that across all the beds seeing as they're probably not all filled equally but let's just say they are i mean we're essentially saving 150 dollars by doing all that work you know does that mean like all hope was lost like that means you just have to spend a ton of money on soil no but what it does mean is that when you go to fill beds, you really need to kind of plan this out way in advance so that you can build up and build up. Now we've done this for about a month of throwing clippings and now a whole partial tree in here. And it's still, it's 27 bucks, 27 bucks. Spent 180 on soil and 27 bucks at the bottom. So now I got to really do kind of like a, do I wait and do more yard maintenance to fill these up more? Or do I just kind of cut my losses and get my vegetables going because I'll save more money through growing vegetables? I'm probably just gonna go and fill them because I want to get these going. I don't want to lose seedlings. I, uh, I don't know. So but that's something for you to think about. I did want, you know me, I love running the numbers to see what it was. So if you're thinking about getting raised beds or you have raised beds, you can use plant material. It just might not go as far as you think it does, but it is worth the effort if you can plan it in for a longer period of time. You have a place you can accumulate stuff. The other thing I wanted to let you know is that white bag soil versus the green bag soil, the white bag soil had a ton of moisture. <laughs> it was very hard to move. So it was two cubic feet, but it was a painful two cubic feet. Like even just lifting it up into the cart, very hard. The 1.5 cubic feet, the green bags, super easy i could carry them move them around which is actually why i'm probably going to go with more of those just because I, I just need i just need to move them around now another option that you can do which i didn't do this time but i did do last time when we did the in-ground beds is we could order bulk soil the challenge i had with where with the bulk soil is my city <laughs> you can order it through there uh they go like whole seasons without having it. So you'll put your order in and they'll be like, it'll be here in two months. And I will tell you that then they got back to me two months later and they're like, it'll be here in three more months. Would you still want to put in the order? And I was like, yeah, no, I mean, it's like half a year at this point. So that can be an option if you have a very reliable city source. The other option is, is you can order from a company, though that was also a challenge for me because the soil I got was basically uh, like more like sawdust than it was soil. Everything has its pros and cons. You gotta figure out what's the right thing for you. But if you have any tricks or tips for reducing the cost or making your life a little bit easier when it comes to filling raised beds, I would love to hear them down below. And with the weather getting a little bit cooler, I want, of course, hear, what are y'all working on? If you wanna learn a little bit about the numbers of filling raised beds, go ahead and check out this video right here. Okay, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye.